Okay, so we want to go over an example now of how to calculate the uh, magnetic dipole moment. Um, so the example we're going to go over is the one in the book, um, which is... Example... Uh, 513. Um, and so this is out of Griffith's fourth edition of his electrodynamics textbook. Okay, so what is the, um, so if I want to find a magnetic moment, um, I have to have a wire loop or a current loop, which is creating the magnetic field. And so the loop that we have is a square, which has a length of each side is W. So I'm writing it as a cursive W, and there's a current flowing through it. So I'm going to give a direction to the current. The current is now flowing, in this case, in the counterclockwise direction. <clears throat> and then um, uh, oh, okay, and so there's also another wire loop, um, which is like this, which also has sides script W. Okay. <clears throat> um, so it's kind of an unusual shape. We basically have this L-shaped wire, um, and one piece that I, sorry, here we go. So here's the shape. The shape is this L-shaped wire where the current starts flowing this way and basically around the loop. Um, right here. So what I can think of is an easier way to come up with this is to break it up into two loops. One with the wire loop um, where, it's mat where its area vector is in the y direction and another to have the wire loop with its area vector in the z direction. Now if you look at the direction of the currents The currents would be um, <clears throat> rotating um, around in the counterclockwise direction. Same thing would be true for Z. And the interesting thing is that if I add these two together, then this current and this current cancel each other out. So a superposition of those two loops <clears throat> because the current is flowing in opposite directions, it basically gives you this region right here. So now I have a much easier job to figure out the magnetic moment of two loops than to try and come up with the geometry to describe the original shape, which is this um, wire loop that's bent into kind of an L shape. Okay. <clears throat> um, Okay, so let's write out the magnetic moment. So the magnetic moment will have a component in the y direction and a component in the z direction. <clears throat> um, and we said that um, here the current is uniform throughout each of the wires. And so in the end, it's just the current times the area in the y direction plus the current times the area in the z direction. <clears throat> the, and I made these be um, squares. So the area then is just the length w squared. And that's true for both um, loops. <clears throat> so we can factor out the i w squared and we're left with basically this direction um, pointing you know basically <clears throat> with a component pointing in the y direction and a component pointing in the z direction so if i look at the overall magnitude that would just be by pythagorean theorem component in the y direction squared plus the component in the z direction squared.
Okay. So in this case, I would have I W squared squared plus I W squared squared square root. Um, and so I basically can factor out an I W squared and I get one plus one or the square root of the current times the area. <clears throat> um, okay, now what about the direction? Well, um, the direction of it, what I can look at is the tangent of some angle <clears throat> is going to be equal to the, how would we define this? Let's say the z direction divided by the y direction, so that's 1. So my angle, therefore, is 45 degrees, or pi over 4. <clears throat> so if I draw the picture again, like so, um, the magnetic moment would essentially be pointing at an angle of 45 degrees. Um, okay. <clears throat> um, so, uh, okay. So what happens then if we were to um, include this into our formula for the magnetic potential? Um, so for the dipole, the magnetic potential is mu zero over four pi, the magnetic moment crossed into the um, distance r divided by r squared. <clears throat> so if I were again to draw a picture of it. Um, or I guess I could add it in. Um, I'll try and use another color, let's say green, where now I'm just picking some some position, and that's my distance r, where I'm now going to be measuring the magnetic potential. Um, <coughs> Um, given the dipole moment that we have. Okay, so basically we have to take the cross product um, of R and M. Um, okay. Um, Okay, so, uh, okay, well, I'll, <laughs> I won't necessarily go into that because we don't, um, anyway, I'm just going to uh, leave it um, in the general form. Um, uh, I instead, let's say that we had just a single loop. where it's now pointing, um, that would be the z direction. <clears throat> um, so let's say if the um, uh, magnetic moment was pointing in the z direction, then, then um, if I was to look at the dipole moment, I'm sorry, the di the magnetic potential of a dipole we're going to turn out to be mu zero over four pi m sine of an angle theta. So now this is our direction r. This is where I want to measure a. And so I have some angle in here, theta. So I'd have m sine theta over r squared. And that would be in the phi direction. And now, if I want to calculate the magnetic field from that, then I would take the curl of the magnetic potential 
So I would end up with mu zero m over four pi r squared <coughs> two times the cosine theta in the r direction plus sine theta in the theta direction. Um, which is very similar to the result we got for the electric field for a dipole. Um, uh, so now just, you know, um, uh, I, I should note that this is just for when we have a very simple loop um, where we've chosen the uh, loop to be oriented such that the magnetic moment is um, pointing in the z direction um, and so you get this result where you get a magnetic field which now has a theta dependence um, in both the r and the theta directions and, and it drops off as 1 over r squared. Um, so this is kind of we can think of like our first result and so there's I guess two things that I should um, comment on. One, so now um, if we have the dipole expression for the um, uh, the dipole expression, um, we have the dipole moment. We can take the dipole moment and calculate what the dipole moment, what the dipole magnetic potential would be. Once we get the dipole magnetic potential, we get a formula for that. Then we can take the curl, and we have the magnetic field. So we've kind of um, worked our way. We're working our way up to find an alternative route to calculating the magnetic field if you don't want to use the Biot-Savart law and if you um, uh, don't have a case where it's a nice symmetric um, current uh, like we would. In that case, we would just use Ampere's law. So here's another alternative route, which is do a multipole expansion and get the dipole term. And now you're left with trying to figure out what the magnetic dipole moment is. Uh, the second comment is that this is just the dipole term. But in the expansion, there is also a quadrupole term, an octopole term. And so we could go on and try and expand uh, and try and solve for those as well. And to make a, the most realistic um, magnetic field, um, we would have to basically start summing up all those terms. What's the dipole term, the quadrupole term, um, the octopole term, um, things like that. Um, but, you know, for the most part, what we're saying is that the quadrupole and the octopole terms are going to be small, so you can neglect them, and the um, magnetic field is dominated by the dipole moment. I'm sorry, is dominated by the dipole term um, from the expansion. So that pretty much concludes um, this chapter on magnetic fields. Um, the next uh, chapter we'll go into is the uh, chapter six in Griffith's book on electrodynamics, which is magnetic fields in materials.